The key to successful relationships is to appreciate that not always does truth lie in my mind. Sometimes truth lies in your mind. All too often we tend to think that it has to be my way or the highway. But the hard fact is when it's in the context of business or whether it's in the context of marriage, we are teammates, we are soulmates, and therefore we have to be open to each other's perspectives. Nowhere is that summed up more beautifully than in the actual Shavu brachas, the seven blessings that are recited at a chuppah, at a marriage, where one blessing ends with the words, Mesameach chasan v'chala, rejoicing the, uh, bride, the groom and the bride, and the other blessing ends, Mesameach chasan imhakala, rejoicing the groom with the bride. In the first instance, rejoicing the groom and the bride means that it's his perspective that is embraced, and then by extension from him over to her, rejoicing the groom and the bride. She accepts his perspective, his way, if you will. The second blessing ends, Mesameach chasan imhakala, rejoicing the groom with the bride. In other words, it's initially with the bride. It's her perspective, and then the groom together with the bride. The real success in any relationship is acknowledging the fact, as in the words of our sages, is in the same way no two people look alike, so too no two people think alike. And invariably, I have to accept the fact that sometimes the answer lies more so in your mind. Sometimes the answer may lie so more in my mind. And we have to have this selfless approach and attitude to whatever it is that we're tackling together. And then with our combined approaches, we'll ultimately achieve the success that we're looking for in whatever it is that we're aspiring to. That works in the context of relationships. That works in the context of business. Any team builder will tell you that every individual party is critical to the overall sum total of the success that the company is looking to achieve. And in a very similar vein in the context of relationships, happy couples will tell you that when they're open to each other's perspectives, that's the way they ultimately achieve bliss and unity together. Ultimately, out of the many one. The greatest impediment to any successful relationship is ego. It's the argument that it has to be my way, where you're not open to another person's perspective. There's that old Jewish joke they tell about the groom who's dating, the, the man who's dating his, his girlfriend, and after speaking of an hour of himself, he suddenly realizes, and so, so I'm sorry, I've, I've spoken so much about myself, why don't we take out a little bit of time for you to tell me what you think about me? And the real point in this context is that it's not always about you. It has to be, and you have to appreciate that it's very much about the other person as well. Both, again, in the context of business, or in the context of marriage, or in any other relationship. To be a true friend, to be a true teammate, to be a true soulmate, you have to appreciate the fact that there's more than one party involved over here and you have to be open to one another. And that has to come from a selfless perspective from both ends. You know, people often say in the context of marriage that marriage is a give and take relationship. That's fundamentally flawed because I'm going to be giving, but often I'll also be focused on what I'm taking. And if I feel that what I'm taking is not commensurate with what I'm actually giving, then at some point I'm going to be inclined to want to stop giving. Real success is understanding that marriage is a give and give relationship, where I concentrate entirely on what I'm giving without concerning myself of what I may be receiving in return. And when both parties conduct themselves in that same framework, then invariably they're both going to be receiving as well, albeit an entirely selfless framework. And to extend that in the broader context of how when you offend somebody, you invariably apologize. There was this video that was going viral on social network where the young man turns to his father and says, Dad, I want to get married. And the father says, Son, first apologize. And he says, But Dad, I did nothing wrong. I'm just telling you I want to get married. Son, but first apologize. And so it repeated itself numerous times over. Finally, he said, OK, Dad, I'm sorry. And the father said, OK, good. Now you're ready to get married. Now, whilst there is some truism to that, and one has to be prepared to apologize and to, again, put aside the ego, which serves as the great impediment, there's a certain flaw in that, con in that parable as well, in the sense that, why am I apologizing? Am I apologizing because I truly feel sorry for what I will have done? Or am I apologizing purely because I don't like the tenacious atmosphere that has been created as a result of my offense? If it's the latter, then I'm only apologizing because I want to just put pay to the tension of the moment. But I don't genuinely feel sorry, and at some point, I'm going to repeat the offense all over again. It's the same way in my relationship with God. To achieve success in my relationship with God, people turn up to Shul and Yom Kippur and they express their sorrow, but why? 
because they're genuinely sorry for what they did wrong or because they're hedging their bets. You know, my life lies in the balance, so I might as well say sorry right now, albeit that if I survive Yom Kippur, I'm going to go back and repeat the offense all over again. Put aside your ego, acknowledge the other individual, be prepared to recognize when you yourself do wrong, open up to express your remorse, be open to one another, give and give, don't worry about the taking, and you will have real success and you'll do away with whatever impediments might otherwise typically and sadly all too often get in the way of successful relationships.